Daddy O! What's up? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 TV episodes that made you cry. Say hi to my mom. For this list, we'll be looking at the most heartbreaking and shocking episodes of television. Our list will focus on live-action TV shows and exclude series finales because it's almost a given that they'll make us cry. Beware of major spoilers ahead. Did your favorite tearjerker make the list? Leave us a comment. Number 20. A Hole in the World – Angel Following in Buffy the Vampire Slayer's footsteps, Angel certainly has as many supernatural hijinks as its predecessor. What it also has is a much darker, much more emotional tone. After inhaling the essence of a demon named Illyria, Winifred Fred Burkle becomes deathly ill. Get medical. Someone get medical now! But demonology gets pretty complicated sometimes. Just when it seems Fred might be saved, the team realizes that to save her would mean Illyria could cause the deaths of many, many more innocent people. It will become the mystical equivalent of Airborne. It will claw into every soul in its path to keep from being trapped entire tens, maybe hundreds of thousands. We'll die in agony, if you save her. Instead, we are forced to watch Fred draw her last breaths in the arms of Wesley. Her last words still haunt fans decades on. Please, Wesley, why can I stay? Number 19, Archie Alone, Archie Bunker's Place. Edith Bunker was, and still is, one of television's most beloved characters. Edith's warm and compassionate presence balanced out the tantrums of her stubborn and irascible husband, Archie. But actress Jean Stapleton only appeared in a few episodes of this All in the Family spinoff. Edith, you got that job? Yeah. Oh, that's terrific! Oh, thank you. Good oh, for you! Between the first and second seasons, Edith was written out and said to have died of an off screen stroke. In the two part season premiere, Archie refuses to show his feelings. I'd like to go to the cemetery. You said we would. Oh, yeah, but I already bought the tickets. You promised. I know I promised, but I didn't say when. This is pretty typical for him. It's what makes watching him come to terms with his wife's death after finding one of her slippers under their bed all the more heart-wrenching. You had no right to leave me that way. You didn't... <sighs> Without giving me just one more chance. Say, I love you. <laughs> Number 18, Ebb Tide's Revenge, The Golden Girls. Few TV moms loved their kids quite as fiercely, or as sarcastically, as Sophia Petrillo. She adored her children, even if she didn't always understand them. For instance, her son Phil never appeared on the show, but he was often mentioned. When Phil dies, Sophia's unable to totally feel her grief because of her unresolved anger at his widow, Angela. Phil's wife's name is Angela. Why do you call her Big Sally? Because she hates it. <laughs> Just as she probably hates the fact that I talked Phil into being buried in the family plot. He never should have married her. She hates all of us. Not true. She hates you. But of course, it's deeper than that. Dorothy's eulogy for her brother is emotional, but the bigger tears start flowing later, when Sophia gets at the root of her hurt. The other women can only watch as she processes the reality that her son really is gone. But every time I saw him, I always wondered what I did, what I said. When was the day that I did whatever I did to make him the way he was? Number 17, The Wind That Blew My Heart Away, One Tree Hill. When a show wants to bring the drama to a fever pitch, a natural disaster is a sure way to do it. In this season three episode, the denizens of Tree Hill, North Carolina are caught up in a destructive rainstorm. Don't cry, it's just a black. I'm not crying, I'm looking for a flashlight. Though the entire cast gets a chance to shine, the most poignant thread of the episode belongs to Peyton and her birth mother, Ellie. Trying to make up for lost time, the two bond through the storm. I don't buy that for one second. And if you keep this up, hiding in your art, in your sadness, you're really gonna miss out. Because the truth is, there is nothing to be afraid of. However, the real devastation comes on a later day after the skies have cleared. Ellie succumbs to breast cancer, leaving Peyton to find her body. Peyton ends the episode spreading Ellie's ashes somewhere special, making us sob. Number 16, My Screw Up, Scrubs. 
At Sacred Heart Hospital, few physicians were as demanding and hard to get along with as Dr. Perry Cox. That's probably why Scrubs hit its most heartbreaking notes when he was the focus. My screw-up sees Dr. Cox's lovable brother Ben coming back to town. So, you still doing the whole kooky guy who brings his camera everywhere thing? Till the day I die. Uh -huh. In a Sixth Sense-like twist, it's revealed that Ben died about halfway through the episode and Cox had been imagining him. Where do you think we are? The episode toys with us, leaving clues to the twist throughout, but the reveal that the characters are at a funeral at the end of the episode is the ultimate gut punch. Number 15, Abyssinia Henry, MASH. This one starts out like almost any other episode of the hit sitcom. The standard zingers fly between the team, even as one of their own, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake prepares to leave. You know, the first night I'm home, after we uh, put the kiddos to bed, Lorraine and I are going upstairs to our room. Having received an honorable discharge, Blake spends the episode saying his meaningful goodbyes. Then, things take a sudden and dark turn. During one of the show's famous operating room scenes, the news comes that Blake was killed when his plane was shot down over the Sea of Japan. Lieutenant Colonel, Henry Blake's plane was shot down over the Sea of Japan. It spun in. There were no survivors. The silence that falls over the scene is atypical of the show and makes the shocking announcement even harder to shake. Number 14, Doomsday, Doctor Who. Many companions have come and gone, but Rose Tyler was among the most popular. Her chemistry with the Doctor was off the charts. Sadly, the two are separated forever, ending up in parallel Earths. <laughs> Their parting is sudden and deeply unfair. Near the end of the episode, the two make one last contact through a breach between worlds, where they almost confess their feelings for each other. I love you. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> and I suppose, <sighs> it's my last chance to say it. She does so, but he fades away before he can say the words. He'll continue his adventures across time and space, but it's a reminder that he'll always have to say goodbye to the people he comes to care about. Number 13, On the Beach, ER. Dr. Mark Green was one of the few constants of the ever-changing cast of doctors that made up the fictional Cook County General Hospital. He was a stalwart presence, level-headed and supportive of his fellow physicians. How's your beautiful wife? How's Jennifer? She's fine. Really? You two settle your problems? Yeah, yeah. Everything's okay. Hate to lose you in the ER, you know. Lie back. When he passes away from a brain tumor in the season 8 episode On the Beach, it represented a huge shift in the show's direction. Although his death had been announced in the previous episode, this one chronicled his last days in Hawaii with his daughter Rachel, among others. His final moments with Rachel are some of the most touching we've ever seen. Don't cry for me. I won't. Generous. Always. And the montage that accompanies his passing is a hard-hitting but appropriate send-off for one of the show's most beloved characters. Someday you wish upon a star Wake up where the clouds are far behind Number 12, never knew love like this before, Pose. For three seasons, Pose brought to life the joy, drama, and artistry of the underground ballroom scene, among other things. And you said it yourself, pray tell. The eyes of the world are on us. And I need to catch that gaze, you hear me? I'm a performer, a star. However, it also reflects the hard lives many of these performers lived. Candy Johnson Ferocity's murder comes as a great shock, but it sadly reflects many real-life events. The episode isn't all sadness and tears, though. Even in death, Candy's not safe from a playful dressing down by her best friends. But if anything, her passing serves as a reminder of the importance of forgiveness, community, and family among the ones she left behind. The episode's final, beautiful stroke of genius is that it gives Candy one last performance for the ages. Number 11, Goodbye, Eight Simple Rules. Think from that he made a career. 
to think from that he made mom fall in love with him. More often than not, sitcoms will keep up their humorous tone even when tackling grave subject matter. But following a real-life tragedy that affected this TV family, this show got serious. Care Bear, don't drive yourself crazy going over and over everything. No one can control what happened. The family members dealing with the unexpected death of their patriarch was particularly difficult to watch, given that this in-story loss was prompted by the all-too-real unexpected passing of John Ritter. Bridget's struggle was particularly heartbreaking as she tried to resolve her guilt over the fact that the last words she said to him were, I hate you. I had my dad, and the last words I ever said to him were, I hate you. We all shed a tear as Kate reads Paul's last article about how every I hate you is an I love you. Because I know that whenever they insult me, whether it's a you're an idiot, what a geek, or an I hate you, and I love you isn't far behind. Number 10. Goodbye, Michael. The Office. Am I doing the wrong thing? Absolutely not. It's just that sometimes goodbyes are a bitch. <laughs> In this bittersweet episode, everyone's favorite boss, Michael Scott, says goodbye to Dunder Mifflin and ventures off into a new life with his true love. Though out of character, Michael foregoes a grandiose farewell, and instead lies about his last day so he can share personal final moments with each member of his Dunder Mifflin family. And then tomorrow, I can tell you <clears throat> what a great boss you turned out to be. Best boss I ever had. Making the episode even more emotional, Pam leaves for part of the day, meaning that Michael risks not getting to say goodbye to his surrogate daughter. Thankfully, in the final minutes of the episode, Pam catches up to him at the airport, and our tears of sadness turn into tears of joy as the two share a tearful goodbye. And he said he was just real excited to get home and see Holly. Number 9. Seven the Hard Way. Boy Meets World. Corey and the gang were always certain they'd be best friends forever, and as viewers, so were we. I know this group as well as anyone living, and I will not have it falling apart! But as the gang becomes divided when a prank war gets out of hand, old problems emerge, loyalties are questioned, and the future of this friendship is threatened. I cannot believe that you would take Rachel's side over mine. I took your side! I wanted to be on Corey and Sean's team. I was excited to be part of that immortal friendship! You left me out, Corey. Eric calls on Mr. Feeney to help, but even he doesn't seem to be able to get them through this one. In a flash forward, we get a glimpse into the tragic future for these friends if they don't work it out. I thought about you so many times. Why didn't you call? Why didn't you? I thought about it. You know, life goes by. Seeing these cherished bonds severed is truly heartbreaking. Corey, how you doing? Okay, uh, I'm okay. Thankfully, they work things out before that future can become reality. Number eight, Papa's got a brand new excuse, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. First time I held you, <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever put you down. So why did you? West Philadelphia born and raised, but with no help from his absentee father. After 14 years of radio silence, Will's father returns, claiming he wants to make things right. But just when Will starts letting himself get close to the man who disappointed him, Lou Smith takes off yet again. Some business came up I gotta handle. So we're gonna have to put a, our trip on hold. You understand. In the final moments of one of the most emotionally charged episodes of the series, we see the usually carefree and goofy Fresh Prince break down in an unforgettable and heart-wrenching monologue. I'm gonna get through college without him? I'm gonna get a great job without him, I'm gonna marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids, I'm gonna be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, cause ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids! Thankfully, there's another father figure in Will's life to comfort him. How come he don't want me, man? Number 7. Long, Long Time. The Last of Us. Though the show centers on Joel taking the young Ellie across a post-apocalyptic America, the third episode was a surprisingly devastating departure following two side characters. The suspicious and paranoid Bill takes in a drifter, Frank, and the two fall in love as the world falls apart around them. <laughs> oh! I traded Joel and Tess one of your guns for a packet of seeds. Over the 75-minute episode, the show managed to craft a love story between them that captured viewers' imaginations, 
and revived the long-neglected Linda Ronstadt song it was named after. I think I'm gonna love you for a long, long time. Their life and death together are poignant and have since seen the episode cited as one of the best ever made. Number six, Losing My Religion, Grey's Anatomy. I changed my dress three times. I wanted to look nice. I would have been here sooner. This medical drama has a flair for episodes highlighting dramatic character deaths. For example, the How to Save a Life episode sees Meredith watch as the nurse slowly unplugs all of the machines keeping Derek alive after a terrible car accident. Are you ready? No, but go ahead. But the one making this list is the heartbreaking episode containing the death of Denny Duquette. Things were looking up for Denny. He received the heart transplant he so desperately needed, and Izzy finally accepted his marriage proposal. An hour ago, he was proposing. And now, and now he's going to. Isn't that ridiculous? Then, in a twist that broke hearts of both characters and the viewers, he suffers a sudden and fatal stroke. Who didn't lose it as Izzy cried over his body? <laughs> Number 5, Tape 7, Side A, 13 Reasons Why. She got into the tub, still with her clothes on. This series about the events leading up to a young woman taking her own life and its aftermath pulls no punches. In the finale of this first season, Clay plays the last tape which reveals that Hannah, in one last cry for help, went to her guidance counselor, whose line of questioning regarding her assault only makes things worse. Did you tell him no? No. Maybe you consented, then you changed your mind. No, it's not like that. Of course, it's one of many difficult scenes in this episode. One of the most tear-jerking moments, however, comes when Clay imagines what life might have been like if he had just done a few simple things differently with Hannah. And you could have stopped it. And I could have. Justin Foley could have. And a dozen other people, at least. But we didn't. Number four, Super Bowl Sunday, This Is Us. You're in front of the TV. <laughs> Let's be honest, every episode of the show makes us cry, but this one seriously brings on the waterworks. For nearly two seasons, viewers tried to piece together how Jack, the Pearson family patriarch, passes away. It seemed at first like the fire that engulfs the Pearson home might claim his life, but miraculously, everyone makes it out. The episode postpones the inevitable event by showing how the Pearsons are handling the 20th anniversary of Jack's death. Both the audience and characters don't know which scene is Jack's last, until his wife Rebecca leaves the room and he suffers a fatal heart attack caused by smoke inhalation. Even though we knew it was coming, losing him was absolutely devastating. <laughs> Number 3, The Body, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. With all of the vampires and demons from hell in this drama, you almost forget that people can die of the most ordinary things. Buffy comes home to find her mother Joyce lifeless on the sofa. Hey, flower getting lady. Want me to pick Dawn up from school? Mom? What are you doing? Her death, which we eventually learn was due to an aneurysm, comes seemingly out of nowhere which makes it all the harder to process. Of course, this is what often happens in real life and only adds to the hurt we feel alongside the characters. The group rallies around Buffy and her sister Dawn, but no one has any concrete answers. I don't think it was, you know, it just happened. Things don't happen. I mean, they don't just happen. For all her supernatural abilities, not even Buffy is immune to the pain of losing a parent. Number 2, Bad News, How I Met Your Mother. As Barney found out in previous episodes, putting a clock on an unfortunate circumstance you are about to face does not make it any easier. No. No! 
Even with the episode title and the countdown built into the episode, fans couldn't have expected the devastating news of Marshall's father's death. Something's happened. Um, your father, he had a heart attack. He didn't make it. Although he is a minor character in the series, the news nonetheless rocked fans. The episode centers around Marshall and Lily visiting a fertility doctor, and therefore fans naturally assume that the bad news would be that the couple are unable to have a baby. We've been trying and trying, and still nothing's happened. As a result, the twist hit twice as hard in the final scene when Lily delivers Marshall the bad news. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Quarterback – Glee How do parents go on when they lose a child? You know, when I would see that stuff on the news, I'd shrug it off because it was just too horrible to think, but I would always think. How do they wake up every day? Another show affected by a devastating real-life tragedy. In this episode, there was a beautiful tribute to late Glee star Cory Monteith, which allowed the fans and the cast to grieve together. 525,600 minutes How do you measure, measure a year? The older cast reunited to mourn their friend's death in their own ways. Finn's parents talk about how they could possibly go on without him, the Glee kids reminisce on good times shared with him, and sing songs that remind them of him. I couldn't make you happy, make your dreams come true. Nothing that I wouldn't do. Go to the ends of the earth for you. To make you feel my Love. Even Sue ditches her stony exterior and expresses her true feelings for him. There weren't enough tissues in the world for this moving episode. 